In this video, we diagnose and repair the anti-siphon vented loop on an M30 universal diesel engine on our Catalina 30 sailboat. We're not experts and are learning as we go, but we hope that sharing our experience is helpful for others who are in the same boat. Today we're going to do another DIY engine maintenance on Blue Moon. Last time we took the boat out, we noticed that our anti-siphon vented loop was leaking from the top. Um, it actually took us a bit of research to actually figure out what the mechanism was and we'll show you that in a minute But basically we are hoping it's just gummed up and the valve just isn't quite working properly and Worst case scenario we may have to replace it. The anti-siphon vented loop is a brass hose loop at the high point of the raw water cooling system and it's a very simple mechanism as far as we can tell as water is pumped up the hose before it gets to the high point positive pressure from the pump keeps a little flapper valve closed and then as water tips over the highest point and starts flowing down the positive pressure goes away the flapper valve opens and it sucks air in with the water so that you don't get a siphon effect so what we think hopefully is that our little flapper valve is gummed up or not functioning properly and allowing or messing with that regular pressure system and water is like coming up the top there are vented loops where you actually allow that, I think, excess water to be pumped out the top and you can vent it overboard. Ours has a cap on it, so under the normal functioning, as far as we can tell, it shouldn't be letting water out. If the valve is not functioning properly and water siphons, when the engine is turned off, like when that positive pump pressure goes away, water can be siphoned back into the exhaust system and then eventually back into the engine and into the pistons, which would be very bad. It would destroy your engine. It would, yeah, it would, it would wreck the engine. Our vented loop is in the galley. Just underneath the sink and that is what it looks like. This is the cap that we're gonna try and remove and then in here is the valve. This is the in here, so water is pumped up through in here and down this way. And this is where the valve lets air in to stop any siphoning action once the engine is turned off. I tried blowing some air through the top hole and it did kind of seem to be going through, which is good. How's it looking? I mean, it looks pretty clean. And how's that looking? Pretty clean. So this is like super simple system that seals the edges and then it's a flapper valve. It flaps open like this. And that's what lets the air in. Yeah. So this is the lid that we got off, or the cap, I guess. And then we managed to just blow this little piece off. This is the valve. And we're looking for wear and tear. Um, we don't really see that much though. The plan is to use some vinegar and let it soak for a while. And we're looking it up. I think vinegar works just fine for cleaning brass. And we'll check that it's good for cleaning rubber as well. Um, and then, yeah, we think maybe it just got a little bit sticky, which is like best case scenario. <laughs> the system seems to be functioning, like the mechanism seems to be functioning just fine. It's very simple, thankfully, very easy to understand. We checked because there's a chance that water could be leaking from the hose clamps where the hoses are actually attached to the brass um, loop. But when we were looking when we were underway, it did seem to be coming from the top hole. And you can also see like that's, you can see where it leaked out um, just based on the green around the brass that's from, that's from salt water. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll put it back together and run the engine and hopefully that solves the problem. We are going to keep this. The reason we got this is because the brass component that we've been working with is about four to five hundred dollars um, and this was 15 so it does the job it is an anti-siphon loop usually boats have two of these anti-siphon vented loops one is for the raw water cooling system and then one is actually for the head so this one would be more like what you'd use for the head 
um, but in a pinch we could use this because as far as we can tell and we'd have to double check this but as far as we can tell the raw water cooling it doesn't get so hot that it would actually melt this plastic this is technically rated for um, engines but obviously the brass one is a little more robust and and it just feels a little better so we're going to try and keep the brass one this one is going to be just in case the other really nice part about the brass ones though is we can just buy a new one of these and we probably will end up just buying a valve if it doesn't work out you don't have to replace the whole system um, it all kind of comes apart which is really nice we've been looking at it we think that this you can see like kind of some corrosion Not, i wouldn't call it corrosion it's just like gunk um and we're thinking that means that it was maybe sticking a bit and not fully flapping open and therefore causing water to spill out okay There's stuff coming off it yeah actually there are little particles coming off it we also, since there's a little bit of corrosion in here, we're going to try and clean this up as well. And for brass, we looked it up. It is about one part vinegar to two parts water. Basically, you just let it sit for a while. Okay, so this has been sitting in that vinegar solution only for a couple hours, and it is amazing how much cleaner it is. Um, you can actually even <laughs> see the number on it now. That's just, I don't know, I might be able to scrub that off. It's not a huge deal. But yeah, this worked super well. I think really the most important part is making sure that it gets that seal. So kind of this area here. Now we didn't end up putting this in vinegar. Because the internet said soap and water. And I think it worked pretty well. The main part with this one is that is what seals. So we don't want to hurt that at all. But we also want to make sure that it's clean. This is just like really soft bristled scrub brush I guess. Okay, that sits in there. So we just push that back in. And then, yeah, in theory, we'll screw this back on, the cap on, and hopefully that will solve our problem. So we're gonna start up the engine, which should turn on all the regular pump systems, and then we should be able to tell pretty fast whether it's going to continue leaking the way it was. How's it looking? I don't see anything. Okay, nice. We'll let it run for like, what, 15 minutes or so? Okay, so the engine has been running for like 15, 20 minutes, which just feels like a good amount of time. I feel like it's, yeah, water's moving through. We've been checking the, um, the loop periodically and there's no water that we can see so that's huge because previously we could actually see water coming down um it feels dry it looks great so now jonas is going to keep an eye on the loop and i'm going to shut off the engine and we're just going to make sure that everything is normal and make sure we don't see any water make sure basically it shuts off because um, that's when the siphoning could happen How is it? Nothing has happened. It looks good. It's not it's not leaking like it was before. So hopefully that's a product of the mild cleaning we gave it. We are gonna keep an eye on it, obviously. And we've got a trip coming up, so we'll just keep an eye on it. We do have that spare which can be used if needed. This will definitely just be part of our regular maintenance, keeping an eye on the anti-siphon anti-siphon venting loop. It's kind of a mouthful. Mm -hmm. 